Good afternoon, everyone. So we have two goals for this session. The first, uh, if we go to the next slide, the first is to provide transparency into the proposal review and selection process. We hope this will enable trust, clarity, and a visual of how the review and selection process will play out, and that understanding this will be beneficial to both those of you who are new to NSF, as well as those who are familiar with other programs across the foundation. Second is related to our overall goal for Proposers Day, which at a basic level is to help teams strengthen their proposals. This session is in large part about encouraging your team to strengthen your proposal by thinking through the lens of the reviewers who will be evaluating it. As we go through this session, if you have questions, feel free to post them in the Q&A feature on Zoom, and please also join us later in the breakout session on the review criteria, which will be devoted to answering your questions on the topics discussed in this session. Okay, so to start off, here's a high level view of the steps for how a proposal submitted to the NSF Engines program will become an award. So after proposals are submitted, the NSF Engines team will check for compliance with the guidelines outlined in the BAA. Those that are compliant will move to the next step in the process, which is review by a set of experts external to NSF with the review process facilitated by NSF program directors. This process results in recommendations to NSF as to the strongest proposals. The NSF Engines Working Group will then consider the full set of recommendations across all of the submitted proposals as we put together the portfolio of projects to award. As a reminder, the awards for both Type 1 and Type 2 proposals will be made as cooperative agreements between NSF and each awarded team. Cooperative agreements means that NSF will be involved in the award throughout its duration and the creation of each cooperative agreement will involve a negotiation process between NSF and the awardee, particularly for the Type 2 awards. So before we get into the focus of this session, if we go to the next slide, which is on the proposal review process, I want to say a few words on the compliance checking process. Okay, so there are many guidelines in the BAA, but we want to call your attention to several of them that will be very strictly followed. So one is the limit on the number of proposals per organization. We know that we have messaged this already, um, some might say exhaustively, but we want to draw, draw your attention here again to the language in the BAA, which states that an organization is only allowed to submit one proposal where they are the lead organization. If an organization exceeds this limitation, we will look at the timestamp of the submission and only the first proposal submitted will continue through the review process. The other proposals will not be reviewed. Second is the deadline. Here too, we will look at the timestamps. For both proposal types, the deadline is 5 p.m. in the submitter's time zone, which is referring to the time zone of the lead organization. So if you are the person submitting, uh, so if, if the person who is submitting is working remotely from a different time zone than their institutions, then they need to be particularly aware of this deadline. We strongly encourage you to begin the submission process early to catch any unexpected issues in advance of the deadline. The third is eligibility to submit as the lead. If you have any questions about whether the organization that you want to list as the lead is in fact eligible to be the lead, then please be sure to check with the engines team. And the fourth is um, proposal certification which must be submitted by the authorized organizational representative as described in the BAA. As the BAA states, failure to submit this form will result in the proposal not being reviewed. There are additional guidelines specified in the BAA, and we have noted some of them here. For example, the required sections and titles within the project summary and project description sections and others. While there will be instances where proposals may not adhere to these guidelines but still make it to the review process, we wanna emphasize that it is actually to your advantage to strictly follow the guidelines in the BAA. The reviewers will be looking through a set of proposals, maybe five, 10, 15, and they will want to find the content quickly and easily, which the specific structure that we have provided will help them to do. They may also view your proposal unfavorably, even before looking at the content, if they notice that your proposal, for example, exceeds the page limit by a few lines or has not followed the budget guidelines. Okay, so um, onto the next slide and onto the proposal review process. 
I'll note that you may hear or see it referred to as NSF's external merit review process. Um, and this is because of the inclusion of reviewers external to NSF and the focus on reviewing proposals based on the evidence or merit found within this uh, within the proposals. I also want to note that the link you see on this slide, let's see, actually, maybe, maybe you don't, yeah, there it is, which is also in the BAA describes NSF standard review process. If you're new to NSF, you may find it helpful to look through that content, but if you do so, keep in mind uh, the deviations from the process described in the BAA and also in this presentation. Okay, so I'll start out now um, by reiterating the goals of NSF's proposal review or uh, external merit review process. So as I referenced earlier, the primary goal is to provide advice and recommendations to the NSF program directors regarding which proposals they believe should be funded. An additional goal is to provide quality feedback to the submitting teams. It's also important to note that this process is designed in a way that preserves the trust, including from all of you, that the review process is carried out in an even-handed way. This includes removing any real or perceived conflicts of interest and also maintaining the confidentiality of proposal content and of the reviewers. So the first question, that people probably have is about who will actually be reviewing the proposals. The engines team will be broadly recruiting and vetting reviewers from across the US who will cover the range of sectors and expertise represented within the submitted proposals. These will include individuals from for-profit and nonprofit organizations, academia and government. It will cover the range of areas needed to put together a successful engine, such as use inspired research, translation of innovations to practice, workforce development, and building coalitions of partnerships, as well as the subject matter expertise within the submitted topic areas. So in short, the reviewers for each proposal will reflect the types of organizations, sectors, and individuals who comprise that proposal. And we encourage you to keep this diverse audience of reviewers in mind when preparing your proposal. I'm going to describe now the steps of how proposals move through the review process. For both type one and type two proposals, the proposals will be put into groups to be reviewed as a set or what we for, refer to as a panel. For this program, you can expect proposals to be grouped based in part on geographic proximity and maybe also on topic area. Reviewers will then be recruited for each panel as described on the previous slide. And each re reviewer will be assigned a set of proposals to review within the panel and will submit written individual reviews about each proposal's strengths and weaknesses. The reviewers for a given panel will then meet to discuss the proposals in that panel and collectively make recommendations to NSF about each proposal. For type one proposals, the NSF team will then move to the proposal selection process as already noted. For type two proposals, a subset of the proposals that reviewed well in the panel will undergo a second round of review and evaluation, which will take place within the proposed site of the engine and will involve the proposing team, as well as NSF and another set of, ex of external experts to NSF that NSF recruits for this purpose. So to reiterate here, you can see the outputs for each proposal that goes through the merit review panel. Each proposal will have a set of individual written reviews, noting its strengths, weaknesses, and the individual funding recommendations. Each proposal will also have a collective written panel summary that will describe the combined and consolidated perspective of the reviewers on the major strengths and weaknesses, as well as a collective funding recommendation. And when you hear back from NSF as to an award or decline decision, you will receive both the individual reviews and panel summaries, anonymized to remove the identity of the reviewers. Okay, so the next question that you may be asking is what exa exactly will the reviewers be asked to comment on in their reviews? The short answer is that we will be evaluating based on the set of additional review criteria noted for type one and type two awards, and we'll say much more about that over the next 45 minutes. Before we get into that, though, I want to draw your attention to what the BAA states about the criteria of intellectual merit and broader impacts. For those who are less familiar with NSF's standard review process, these are the two standard criteria that are used to evaluate all proposals submitted to NSF. Intellectual merit is the potential to advance knowledge, and broader impacts is the potential to benefit society. 
There's a set of questions that are typically used when evaluating for these criteria, and you can find those within NSF's Proposal and Award Policies and Procedures Guide, or PAPPG. But what's important to note here is that these criteria are folded into the BAA specific review criteria as stated in the BAA and highlighted um, uh, over here on the slide. So again, we want to emphasize that teams should pay very close attention to the BAA specific review criteria, since that is what the reviewers will be using to guide the reviews as to the strengths and weaknesses of your proposal. Okay, so as described in the BAA, if we go to the next slide, the additional review criteria for the type one awards encompass seven categories, A to G noted on this slide. These are the purpose and vision, regional importance and impact, the leadership team, partnerships, workforce development, diversity, equity, inclusion, and accessibility, and risk and identification and adaptability. The review criteria for the type two awards encompass these seven categories as, um, as well, but also include two additional categories existing and new resources and effectiveness and sustainability. Keep in mind that the goal of type one awards is in essence about planning for an engine. So the review process will consider these criteria within that context. In contrast, type two awards will be reviewed in the context of its goals, which are to build an engine and execute plans. Reviewers will be looking for this high level goal and it should be evident throughout your proposal. It's important to also point out that these review criteria intentionally do not match one-to-one -one with the specific required sections noted in the proposal or in the, um, in the BAA. And the intention is not for each of these, um, for, for you to include each of these review criteria as an individual section in your proposal. Instead, we'll be asking the reviewers to look throughout the proposal for evidence of strengths of these criteria. Since, for example, workforce development should not be its own disjointed effort described solely in its own section, but should be woven into the description of partnerships, um, the impact to the region, and other aspects of the proposal. Okay, if we go to the next slide, you can see here a set of questions that we have included with each of the review criteria for type one. So I'm not actually expecting that you can read what's on this screen. The point of putting this here is to remind you that we have included fairly detailed guidance in the form of questions for each criterion, and that will be evaluated by the reviewers. And to be very clear, this is the exact same language that the reviewers will be shown when we are briefing them on how to review the proposals. So similarly for type two, we have a set of questions for each review criterion category, which in some cases has some of the same questions as for type one, and in others it has additional questions or is modified in order to help bring out the goals of building an engine. Keep in mind, however, that each reviewer will take this set of questions describing each criterion and will hone in and interpret these based on their experience and perspective into innovation ecosystems.